Hello, everyone, and welcome to the newest episode of The Jay Davis Show. Today, I have Kent Kramer with us. He's the CEO of Goodwill of Central and Southern Indiana and Goodwill Day, Puerto Rico. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Kent. Great to be here, Jay. Well, can you give everyone a bio and background of kind of how you've uh, progressed through your career over the years? I can. And uh, um, for me, it started back in high school and uh, working in a grocery store for three years. I fell in love uh, with the business and uh, went on to college and, and never forgot that experience, that retail experience. So I knew when I uh, finished up school at Indiana State in Terre Haute, Indiana, that I wanted to get into retail. And, and um, Walmart came to campus, uh, but under a different model. It was the Sam's Club division oh, yeah. of Walmart. It was new. Uh, this was back 1990. So Walmart uh, had started up uh, a few years before uh, the Sam's Club, and it, it was starting to expand. So I hired on um, as a, a trainee in Springfield, Missouri, and stayed 11 years uh, with Sam's Club, moved eight times, and ended up you know, working my way up through operations and becoming a multi-unit uh, manager uh, in Maryland, um, uh, uh, New Jersey. And then ultimately, as we started to have a family, they had a child born in D.C., a child born in New Jersey. Uh, we moved back to Indiana, where my wife and I were both from, and and ended up taking a job with Goodwill 21 years ago as a vice president of retail. So I did that that job for uh, 10 years and got my MBA and went through some executive development programs with um, Goodwill International and and ultimately, uh, nine years ago, uh, applied for the job of CEO and president and CEO and, and, and got that. And at the time, it was Goodwill of Central Indiana, and we've had a, a lot of growth in the last nine years. That's amazing. Can you explain, for those who don't know, I don't know as much. I obviously know Goodwill, and I'm aware of uh, a lot of the initiatives that you guys do to help other people and help people to, you know, overcome challenges in their lives. Can you give us a little more understanding of like, how does the business side, even though it's a nonprofit, what's kind of the business structure of Goodwill? How does that all work? Yeah. So uh, a lot of people know us and you probably do too, Jay, for our retail stores and we, you know, yeah. thrift stores that uh, take donations of, you know, um, clothing and household goods. And then we employ people to take those donations and price those donations and sell those donations and, and, you know, create a lot of job opportunities that way. But also we're able to take the proceeds and invest in other programs. And what folks may not know about Goodwill, there's 155 Goodwill organizations across North America. We're one of those based in Indianapolis. Uh, and we operate, um, in Indiana, but we also have expanded to Puerto Rico. But uh, in essence, the retail is kind of like a front, <laughs> if you look yeah. at it this way, because we also um, operate 17 high schools in um, for our goodwill. 16 of those are adult high schools, helping adults that dropped out of high school uh, earn their high school diploma, and we get them additional certifications, and we link them uh, to jobs, uh, middle school jobs and industries that are in high demand. So that's, uh, um, you know, one part of it we have in our goodwill, we have seven manufacturing facilities. So we're, um, um, you know, creating and producing, uh, um, product for companies that, um, need it. Examples would be for Cook Medical, which is a, um, Bloomington, Indiana based, um, company, uh, we build uh, medical devices for them, sheaths and catheters in a, in a manufacturing plant. We uh, build white noise speakers for an organization called Lincor. Um, Carrier is a um, customer of ours, and we build yeah. um, uh, for commercial HVAC units. We build their uh, filters that go in, in those. Um, 
So we do a lot, you know, from a manufacturing standpoint, but we also have programs that really work with people with disabilities, uh, people that um, have been, um, as we say, touched by the justice system. So they've served time and uh, are coming out of the system. We actually have one manufacturing plant that operates in um, a prison. Uh, we work with senior adults. Um, and I, I say this loosely because I am, I qualify for this, Jay. 55 and older individuals <laughs> that find themselves in need of employment. Uh, maybe they're a spouse of somebody passed away and, and one social security check is not enough to um, provide um, for them. So they got to go out and get training and get a job. So we provide a, a program around that. Um, and then another large program that we operate, and we do this in 61 counties in Indiana, serving 2,600 families, and that's called Nurse Family Partnership, where we pair a registered nurse with a f- uh, low-income first-time mom, and that relationship lasts for two and a half years. Um, the this nurse will visit about 50 times, and not only does this help improve birth outcomes and uh, maternal and infant health during that time, but also we connect that mom and that family to jobs, to education, and other things to help take that family and move them on to what's next. So ultimately, through all those programs that I just mentioned, we try and wrap resources around people and help them increase their independence and hopefully reach their potential and get them um, kind of work their way. Many are in poverty, work their way out of poverty, uh, and stabilize and, and uh, help them find success in life. That's I just so threw awesome. a lot at you, Jay. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. I, I think that's so cool, and I think it's uh, so incredible to find organizations who, you know, I think Goodwill is one for sure that, uh, <laughs> as you said, might, only be known for kind of this one piece and they're doing so much good behind the scenes uh, that they don't kind of constantly tout and try and get credit for because they actually just really want to help people. And that's, that's so admirable and so awesome. Um, one of the things I want to ask about is like for you personally, uh, what got you excited about Goodwill? Like obviously you were at Sam's Club, which is also, you know, the Walmart Sam's Club organization is an incredible organization. Uh, what what kind of drew you to this and, and how did you make some of that career decision? I think a lot of times people are, uh, you know, struggling with that. They're trying to figure out, like, what am I passionate about? What do I care about? Um, how did you, especially now with some of the wisdom of looking back, uh, how did you make some of those decisions and what advice would you give people? So back in 2002 when i uh came to goodwill i was working at kmart and this is a time when kmart was going through some bankruptcy uh issues and obviously we know what happened um from there uh so honestly um for me with four kids they uh, my kids were two four six and eight at the time it was um uh kind of survival mode for me um, knowing that, that Kmart was going through all the issues they were, I was always looking over my shoulder, just kind of waiting to be the next person that was going to be asked to leave. Uh, and a recruiter called me about the Goodwill, um, job and they were looking for somebody with multi-unit experience in retail. And, um, so retail got my foot in the door, but Jay, it was It was about a week into the job. I went into one of our stores. We had 23 at the time. Uh, We have 75 now. He had 23 stores at the time. And I ran into an individual that I went to high school with. So this was uh, Muncie, Indiana. This was my hometown where I worked in that grocery. I was also a basketball manager for the basketball team. You know, this is Indiana, so it's a big deal. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Even to to make the team as a manager. But one of my uh, co-managers on that team, his name was Mike, and he has has cerebral palsy. And I, you know, I left and moved around a lot with Sam's Club after college, so I lost contact with Mike. But there he was in the back room of this store I walked in that I was now supervising, 
um, one of those 23 stores and there's Mike working and, you know, uh, naive me from high school, um, didn't understand. I didn't really think about is Mike ever going to work, but not only was he working, Goodwill had helped him get a driver's license and helped him get his first truck and then helped him become self-sufficient, uh, in his own home and run in, ran into Mike's, uh, uh, parents in town there and you know kind of like with tears in their eyes they were just saying how much uh, goodwill and the wraparound resources that they had provided to mike had changed his life they thought that he would be kind of in their care um for the entirety of their life and they you know they didn't know what would happen but you know cerebral palsy, uh, cerebral palsy eventually took over um, Mike, and he, it became too difficult to work, but he spent 25 years. He spent a career. He still lives in, in Muncie. He's still self-sufficient. And, uh, I kept running into these stories about people like Mike and how we at Goodwill had helped them. So retail got my foot in the door, but the way we cared for, the way we provided research resources for people um has kept me there for 21 years so yeah that's amazing so cool it's amazing to see some of those stories uh early on in, in the pillow cube days we were trying to find someone to help us with uh with manufacturing we actually connected with a group here in utah who does a similar okay. program where they they work with some of the the different prisons and uh, it was amazing to go to those places and they were so passionate about what they were doing. I mean, oh, yeah. they were, they were part of the team and really were just so excited. And it was a cool program where they really were doing some of those amazing things. So it's so fun to hear those stories of people. And, and I think that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, no matter, if, you know, what your belief system is, seeing people kind of turn things around, I think gives you a lot of hope for uh for humanity or even if they're not turning around just getting opportunity uh as as with your friend uh from high school um yeah. what uh what have you done to both innovate on uh what you guys are doing but at the same time stay true i think that's something that Every every leader I've ever talked to, whether they're at a startup and they're they're trying to figure out like, okay, we have this one great product, now we're trying to develop something new, we're trying to keep growing, we don't want to stay stale and complacent uh, or ever get stale and complacent. Um, what have you done to encourage some of that innovation without losing who you guys are and, and yeah. getting too outside of the box? How, do you, how have you balanced that as a leader and executive? Yeah, so uh, a lot of it's in the culture of our organization. So uh, uh, Goodwill of Central Indiana, Goodwill Central and Southern Indiana has been around for 93 years. I happen to be the fourth um, CEO during that whole time. My predecessor, who I had the privilege of working with for 13 years before I became CEO, uh, spent 41 years in the role. So, um, wow. you know, had a lot of time with him and then have had you know, nine years since then. And as a nonprofit, uh, we have a board of directors that governs us. So they're, I'm their employee. They hire me and they hold me accountable. Just like a public company, you know, we don't have to, um, you know, we don't divvy up the, uh, um, the profits. profits among shareholders. We invest back into goodwill. And that what's, that's kind of what makes us a, a nonprofit. But we also have this volunteer board of directors of civic leaders uh, around our community and um, what's developed over the years and definitely what I have tested um, is the fact that they allow us to be innovative. They encourage us to try things. And if we fail, we learn from it, but it's not the end of the day. It's not, um, you know, uh, heads don't roll. And, you know, so allow they allow us and we have a culture of really trying and innovative things in the spirit of helping people. And, uh, so, you know, for us, um, you know, that's always been at the forefront. So I have the flexibility and, um, um, the culture to try things. And, um, you know, we put a lot of effort into, uh, research and, and, you know, um, trying different things. 
you know, an example would be that nurse family partnership program I talked to you about, you know, it's not something a lot of Goodwills do. Actually, there's only a couple that do that nurse home visitation program. Uh, but we did a lot of research. It met a need that wasn't in our community. There was no program like it in the Indianapolis area and, and in the state of Indiana. So we brought that to Indiana. Um, if it would have failed, um, we would have moved on to something else. It didn't, you know, it's worked well and, and we've been able to expand and we have 104 registered nurses on our staff now doing really good work with 2,600 uh, families. So uh, a lot of organizations, maybe that wouldn't even come up as a potential opportunity. But as I said, in the spirit and with it aligned with the mission of Goodwill and helping people and helping them prepare for what's next, it did um, align. You know, I'll, I'll list Puerto Rico as another opportunity. Goodwill itself uh, has been around since 1902 and boss started in Boston, uh, in the, uh, Methodist church. Um, uh, Reverend Helms went out into the suburbs of Boston, collected donations, brought it in town and helped immigrants. Um, first he gave it away and then ended up creating jobs through this. And, and then it expanded over the years. It never got to Puerto Rico for whatever reason, there has never been uh, a goodwill in Puerto Rico. We found that out, raised our hand and said, we would like to give it a try. There's 3.1 million people on the island. There, there's no thrift presence from a goodwill perspective. The high schools we run, nurse family partnership manufacturing, there's lots of opportunities uh, to develop programs and provide um, you know, goodwill services on the island. So we raised our hand, went through a process and were selected to do that. Uh, a board of directors that would hear that and not understand the culture of what we're doing, it would have been difficult for some to swallow that. Yeah. Um, but they've accepted, embraced it, and really encouraged us um, uh, to grow that way. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a bit of a leap. I mean, especially just geographically. A uh, <clears throat> bit different. I'm a, I'm a huge Puerto Rico fan. I, the people are unbelievable there. Uh, some of the most beautiful places I've it ever is. seen in my life. Uh, we went there and did a project there in 2018. And man, it's just, you, you get there and you just kind of fall in love. I mean, it's you just, do. you do. Coolest. And there's need also, you know yeah. what I mean? There, yeah, yeah. there is. So you've got yeah. all this beauty and then you've got, you know, um, people living in Trouble. poverty with, without a lot yeah. of opportunities. That's what we hope to bring there is, is opportunity and job training and upskilling people so they can take some of these jobs in hospitals and in manufacturing facilities and, and get them prepared for, you know, the economy of, uh, of tomorrow. So we're, we're really excited to be there and hopefully we can replicate what we've done here. So it's a very similar population as far as the numbers about, we have about 3.3 million in our territory. And in that, we've got 4,700 employees at about 110 uh, facilities. And, and we see very, a lot of similarities, especially you've been there. So, you know, retail is really strong in Puerto Rico. There's all kinds of malls and, and the malls over there aren't what we see here today. You know, the malls are vibrant and they've got all these tenants and just tons of traffic. And uh, so we see lots of opportunity uh, to really grow our business uh but also help more and more people so we're excited about that yeah no it's it's very true it's uh it was super fun when we did our project we drove around the whole island that was like part of what we were we were doing and uh we developed a game called church's chicken versus walgreens uh <laughs> because every <laughs> quarter mile it's like oh there's another church's chicken and the game yes. is just which one you can count more of. It was a pretty simple game. Yeah. Uh, but it's so funny. They, they love Walgreens there. And there they it's do. like kind of more like a grocery store, convenience store mix. It is. Like that's where people do their shopping. It's really interesting. It was really cool. So I think it's a great, great expansion opportunity. Because uh, like you said, there there's a lot of opportunity there and, yeah. and a lot of need as well. Yeah. 
and, That's and you know, I've had I've had folks ask me, you know, is isn't that crazy, or you know, uh, why would you spread yourself that way? And um, I'll, Jay, I've got a really high performing team, and yeah. uh, worked with a lot of them, you know, for a decade plus. And I told you we have seventy five stores in our territory, so we're we're on the cusp of being saturated in our market. Um, there's still some opportunities. Um, but the nurse family partnership is in every territory, every, every county that we're allowed to operate in, um, our stores. So what going to Puerto Rico and opening this up, uh, it, I can engage the talent that I have and it gives them something to really think about and work towards. And it, it's interjected a lot of life, in my opinion, into our organization and excitement because I truly believe this. Um, a healthy and thriving organization um, correlates very strongly with a growing organization. So if you can continue to find pathways to grow, you're going to keep your people engaged and give them hope for growth in their own careers. And, and sometimes, especially in a nonprofit like um, Goodwill, uh, if you've fully developed your market um, and things start to plateau, uh, that's when people start looking and yeah. uh, want to create opportunities for people to um, to continue to grow and, and prosper. So that's that's I'm excited about that part of uh, our growth as well. Yeah. So have you brought some? Has a lot of the leadership been brought uh, from the Indiana area, and you've allowed people to go out there full time, or do people kind of take rotations? How does that work? So this is this is fairly new. We were awarded the territory in April. And uh, we've signed our first lease for our first store and hired our first employee that happens to be, um, you know, on the island in Puerto Rico. So yeah. it's a blend of our, our team here in Indiana and people that will hire uh, in Puerto Rico to advance it. That's amazing. Well, one of the things I love to ask uh, to, to CEOs in particular um, you've had a lot of leadership experience, uh, you know, in, in many different scenarios, uh, multi-stores, running different divisions, teams, um, different things. As you've made that shift from being a leader, an executive, and, and you continue that, but you're now also a CEO. Um, and I think it's one of, a really hard shift, especially uh, really for everyone. Um, it can be really hard for people who are in startups and, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, I'm now the CEO and I just had this idea. I love asking people with, with uh, incredible experience, like what have you learned about becoming a CEO uh, that maybe was surprising or unexpected um, that you've now, that's really kind of been imprinted on your mind of like, oh, I would not have thought that. Yeah. So, you know, being a VP of the largest division and then being COO, which I did for uh, a couple of years became, before I became CEO, my focus almost entirely was internal. Yeah. Um, so I underestimated the amount of time that external would take uh, with board relations, building relationships, you know, um, across many sectors, including political as well as, um, you know, community. Uh, I underestimated the amount of time that would take, uh, but also the value that it would, that the value of building relationships and partnerships, you know, outside of your organization, what that would do, um, you know, cause nine years ago we had one manufacturing plant, um, but by getting out and sharing our capabilities with other, uh, individuals by, um, participating in, in, uh, opportunities and, you know, honestly like this, Jay, you know, somebody may hear this and, you know, learn something about goodwill they didn't know about and, and give us a call. So for me, that has been, um, you know, uh, a big lesson to learn, uh, it's taken me a while, uh, to get there because, uh, when I first, you know, kind of took over nine years ago. I had more direct reports than I really needed. And it took me a long time to figure out my um, structure. And, and uh, you know, I'm down to 
you know, in essence, what's um, four direct reports now and over, you know, divisions and, and, but it took me a while to do that because I wanted to stay involved. I, that's what I love. I loved visiting stores, like, and seeing the Mike Benny cuffs and, and, uh, you know, just being able to, um, be engaged in, in critical decisions. And so figuring that out over time has been, uh, difficult. And I think I'm still learning, but getting a little bit out of the operations and more externally focused has paid off. It's amazing. It's, it's That's it's great advice. advice. Glad I'm not the only one who struggles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you have a much bigger, you yeah. know, we're, we're, we're less than a hundred people. Yeah. Uh, and, and so th- I'm glad it's it's not just me. I think a lot of leaders feel encouraged when when they hear that. And a lot of what you said, the structuring, it's tough to structure. And you know, how many direct reports should you have as a CEO? Um, you know, sometimes you can have too many. You want to find that balance. And so I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, <laughs> I'm not happy to hear you. You've had challenges, but it is does make me feel better that I'm not the only one who's who's experiencing challenges. So <laughs> it's good it's good to know. We're all being stretched and, yes. and growing. So that's awesome. Well if there's someone listening, like like you mentioned, if there's someone listening and they're interested in helping, interested in getting involved or excited about a career opportunity, what what would you recommend? You know, those might be kind of two categories, but what would you recommend and how can people help uh, and be involved with what you guys are doing? So, you know, like I said, Jay, there's 155 Goodwills uh, across uh, North America. Most major cities have a Goodwill that's based uh, in that town. Yeah. And, you know, at first blush, if you just think, oh, they're, you know, they're a retail, a thrift retail nonprofit, uh, we truly are a social enterprise. So they may not all have all the programs I have, but. Many Goodwills hire engineers, HR professionals, accountants. You know, most Goodwills have a CFO. So there's a lot of professional um, positions. And uh, just like I have found it rewarding as a, as a, a retailer and now um, a social service provider, um, a lot of our professional positions find equal reward. So uh, I would, you know, most Goodwills have uh, job boards so they can, if they Google, uh, and search their local goodwill. So that's if you're interested in in joining. Um, every goodwill has, you know, boards of directors, and these are volunteer positions. It's a way to get engaged in your community and learn. Uh, so reach out to your local goodwill to find out what those opportunities are. And then I always say this, um, um, you know, it's a great place to donate your goods, your clothing, and, and as you're cleaning out your closets and your garages and your basements. Um, we are good stewards of those donations and we put people to work and we invest in programs. Uh, and it's, it's a wonderful cycle. Um, so, uh, to be able to provide people. So, uh, people that shop, there's people that need to shop at Goodwill. And then there's treasure hunters that just love going and, and finding things that we love both types of shoppers. Um, so we pr- like providing a service for people to get affordable, uh, items. And we also love those treasure hunters that even if they are going to go resell something or they're a collector of, of something, um, because, you know, behind that is creation of, you know, literally thousands of jobs and thousands of opportunities for people to, to find success. So that was what I would tell people, Jay. Yeah, I love it. Well, there's, there's nothing more fun than going to a Goodwill for me and, and looking at uh you know different different items books uh oh, yeah. definitely being one of them as a as a book lover so it's it's so fun that's so awesome well thank you so much Kent for coming on uh i i took a bunch of notes as of things that i'm uh, i learned and and want to do better as a leader and so uh we really appreciate you being willing to share your experiences and uh wisdom with us so thanks yeah. again well, thank you for the invite and uh, uh, congratulations on your work and, and appreciate uh, you getting these messages out there. You bet. Thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thank you.